Hello and welcome to the practice edition of the Race Weekend Data Analysis for the Spanish Grand Prix, the series in which we compare all of the data from the practice sessions FP1, FP2 and FP3 and see exactly how the teammates have performed against each other, against all of the data from the previous races this season. Now don't fret, I will be currently recording the qualifying edition when this is uploaded and the qualifying edition will come out slightly later this evening. And so without further ado, we will jump on in to the race weekend data analysis for Spain and we are looking at the practice data today. Let us just quickly run down what has happened so far in the sessions and we begin with FP1. Topped by Valtteri Bottas, a 1 minute 18.5 just ahead of Max Verstappen in the Red Bull and then Lewis Hamilton P3 with Lando Norris P4, then the two Ferraris. Not really much happened apart from Mazepin spinning within the first five minutes. FP2 topped by the two Mercedes, this time it is Lewis Hamilton ahead of Valtteri Bottas. Charles Leclerc moves up to P3 and the two Alpines jump up to 4th and 5th. The two Alfa Tories are 6th and 7th with signs in 8th and the two Red Bulls had a bit of a scrappy session. Now they never actually put in a decent competitive lap time in FP2 and that is evident in their FP3 times as Max Verstappen was the only driver and also the first driver of this year to step into the 1 minute 17s around Barcelona. Hamilton though a strong P2 and the two Ferraris an even stronger P3 and P4 ahead of Valtteri Bottas, all drivers on the soft compound of tyres. Gasly splits the two McLarens in 6th or in 7th with the McLarens 6th and 8th, Raikkonen pops into the top 10 and Perez is 8 tenths down on Max Verstappen, not the performance he needed at all. But compiling all of these times together and putting them into a graph, we can see the driver progression. And we can see nicely that Nikita Mazepin and also Mick Schumacher in the Haas cars are the two cars at the back. Also Nicholas Latifi as well, it is those three that have always been at the back of each session. As for everybody else, it's a little bit of a wash of in terms of improvements from FP1 to FP2, and then a little bit of a plateau from FP2 to FP3, much like we saw in Portimao. But then taking each team's fastest times and then working out the improvement from FP1 to FP2 regardless of which driver set it, we can say that the most improved team from FP1 to FP2 was 1.2 seconds in terms of Alpine, followed by Ferrari just a 6 tenth improvement from the two sessions, with Red Bull and McLaren being the only teams to lose time from FP1 to FP2, but remember Red Bull never actually puts together a competitive lap time in the second session. And in terms of FP2 to FP3 improvement, it's actually Williams who tops this session, only just ahead of Red Bull, with McLaren improving by 6 tenths, Alfa Romeo half a second, Haas 3 tenths of a second, Mercedes exactly one, and then Aston Martin, Alfa Tori and Ferrari all under a tenth of a second, with Alpine having a mega FP2 session and a not so mega FP3 session. And so with the basic practice overview all done and dusted, we will now take a look at each of the teammates' comparisons, and we will be going in 2020 championship order, so we start with Mercedes. And taking a look at this, we can see that their FP1 positions for Lewis Hamilton in the black line is a little bit on the inconsistent side compared to Valtteri Bottas, who does extremely well in FP1. But come FP3, Hamilton is the more dominant driver. And we can see that in their head-to-head -head in the bottom middle graph. It is 4-0 in favour of Valtteri Bottas in FP1, but in FP3, it is 4-0 in terms of Lewis Hamilton. And taking a look at the gaps chart in the top right, those are the gaps between each driver in the three sessions that we've had so far for practice. And then comparing them to the average gap, that is the average gap of the races previous in this season. So in FP3 in Spain, Lewis Hamilton was three and a half tenths faster than Valtteri Bottas. And compared to his season's average, he was a hundredth of a second faster this time out in Spain. However, his FP2 advantage over Valtteri Bottas in Spain was actually lower by about a tenth of a second than his season's average, and Valtteri Bottas's FP1 advantage over Lewis Hamilton has also come down a little bit. But then we take a look at Red Bull, and again, a very inconsistent session for both Red Bulls in FP1 and FP2. 
P2. Very inconsistent position so far, but interestingly, Max Verstappen has finished P1 in every single FP3 session so far this season, and it is very dominant towards Max Verstappen in the head-to-head, -head, with Sergio Perez only beating him once so far this season in FP2. The rest of the times, Verstappen has been the lead driver. And if we take a look at the gaps in the top right, eight tenths was the gap in FP1 between the two drivers, which was just, just about the season's average gap so far. And then in FP3, the gap was seven tenths. That is two hundredths of a second over the average so far. Not a good session whatsoever for Sergio Perez. However, the FP2 gap was only a tenth of a second, which is about five tenths under, about half a second under the season's average so far. So FP2 was good, FP1 and FP3 not so good. But arguably, looking at the progression graph, the one in the top middle, we can say that FP2 was a little bit of a bad session for Max Verstappen, which is why Sergio Perez was so close. So rather than Sergio Perez actually getting better, it was Max Verstappen that got a little bit worse. And then from Red Bull, we take a look at McLaren. And again, they're fairly even, especially in FP2 and FP3. A tenth of a second separated both drivers in each session. However, FP1 was a little bit more of a whitewash. Another eight-tenth gap in favour of Lando Norris. It is 3-1 in every single head-to-head -head session against Daniel Ricciardo. And if we take a look at the average gaps in FP1, Norris's advantage was about three-tenths over the average so far, whereas the FP2 and FP3 advantages are about four-tenths lower than they were. So Daniel Ricciardo is definitely improving and slowly getting more comfortable in that car. And from team number three, we take a look at Aston Martin. Now, this is a very wishy-washy, washy-wishy session for Aston Martin. A very good FP1, or a very respectable FP1. A very decent FP2. And then a very poor FP3. And in terms of the head-to-head -head advantages, it is 2-0, or two, sorry, 2-0, two 2-all two in FP1 between Vettel and Stroll, 3-1 in FP2 in favour of Stroll, and then 4-0 in favour of Stroll in FP3. So Stroll progressively gets better over the weekend, and Vettel traditionally hits the ground a little bit faster than Lance Stroll does. But definitely not an ideal session for Aston Martin whatsoever in terms of race pace or even single lap pace. I thought they could have gotten into Q3, but I'm having some small doubts. But taking a look at the gaps, it was two tenths in FP1 ahead for Sebastian Vettel, which is about a tenth and a bit faster than his season's average so far. This is the first time he's been ahead of Lance Stroll in FP2, so there is no average data to take a look at here. And then Lance Stroll's average over Sebastian Vettel was half a second in FP3, which is about three tenths faster than his average so far. But again, looking at the progression graph, we can see that Vettel had a big time loss. So perhaps he does have a little bit more pace in hand. And then from Aston Martin, we take a look at Alpine. Now, these drivers were exceptionally even, with the largest gap between them this weekend so far being two and a half tenths in favour of Esteban Ocon in FP1. In the head-to-heads, it's 3-1 in FP1 and FP2 in favour of the Frenchman, and 2 all in FP3. And taking a look at the averages, every single session in Spain was lower than either driver's average advantage so far over the other. So this is very, very good stuff from Alpine. Both drivers are slowly coming closer and much more evenly matched. And then from Alpine, we take a look at Scuderia Ferrari. And once again, this is dominated by Charles Leclerc, but Carlos Sainz is very, very close. It is not a whitewash like we have seen with the Red Bulls. They are very, very consistent in all of the sessions that they have been in so far. Perhaps FP3 and FP2 is a little bit on the inconsistent side, but Charles Leclerc definitely has a stranglehold in FP1 and FP3. However, FP2, it's actually 3-1 in favour of Carlos Sainz. And taking a look at the gaps chart in the top right, all of the advantages in favour of Charles Leclerc are lower than the season's average so far. But once again, this is the first time Leclerc has been ahead of signs in FP2, so there is no average data for that driver just yet. And then we take a look at Alpha Tori, and once again, it is all dominated by Pierre Gasly. On only one occasion this year in FP2 has Yuki Tsunoda managed to outperform him. And taking a look at the gaps in the top right, it was six tenths in favour of Pierre Gasly in FP1, which is well under half 
what the season's average is so far, which is one and a half seconds across the first three races, the gap to be, or the gap between the two Alpha Tori drivers. However, the average gap in FP2 and FP3 is 6 and 5 tenths respectively, and in FP2 and FP3, for the Spanish GP gaps, it was just 2 hundredths of a second in FP2, and just over a tenth in FP3. So those gaps are definitely, definitely coming down, but I would love, I would love to see just a touch more consistency from Yuki Tsunoda. And then from Alpha Tori, we take a look at Alpha Romeo. Now, Kimi Raikkonen did not partake in FP1. It was Robert Kubica who was in the car, and he dipped it in the gravel. It is two all in the head-to-head -head in FP1, 3-1 in favour of Giovinazzi in FP2, but 3-1 in favour of Raikkonen in FP3. And taking a look at the gaps, it was a significant 6 tenth difference between the two drivers in favour of Raikkonen, which is about half a second up on the season's average so far. Whereas Giovinazzi's uh, gap in FP2 was only 9 hundredths of a second in Spain, with a season's average of 4 tenths, so that gap has definitely come down so far. But it's definitely going to be a struggle for Alfa Romeo to get on into Q2, but they could potentially do it. They were in the top 10 with Kimi Raikkonen in FP3, so there is that potential. And then we take a look at Haas, and this is absolutely dominated towards Mick Schumacher. The gaps are absolutely ludicrous. 1.2 seconds between the two of them in FP1. That is actually a tenth closer than the average gap so far in FP1. So Mazepin can never really get up to speed as quickly as Mick Schumacher can in the first session, but he does progressively bring that gap down. And in FP2 in Spain, it was four tenths, which is about two tenths quicker than the season's average between the two drivers so far. And then in FP3, the gap was two tenths, so he is progressively getting closer and closer, with the season's average between the two drivers in the final practice session being six tenths of a second. So Mazepin is 100% improving, he's just not getting quite close enough to actually outperform Mick Schumacher just yet. And then finally for the practice edition of the Race Weekend Data Analysis for the Spanish Grand Prix, we take a look at Williams. And again, this is dominated by George Russell. However, the Brits did not partake in FP1. It was Roy Nissany that was once again in the car. And in terms of the head-to-heads, Nicholas Latifi actually starts off pretty well in the weekend. It is two all in favour of FP1, and then 3-1 in favour of George Russell in FP2, and then 4-0 in FP3. And taking a look at the gaps, the FP3 gap was four tenths of a second, which is just a little bit less than the season's average that the Brit holds over Nicholas Latifi so far. And the FP2 gap is significantly closer than the season's average of nine tenths between the two drivers in George Russell's favour. And it is under a tenth of a second in the Spanish Grand Prix. There is potential for Williams to get on into Q2, with Q3 being a almighty struggle if they were to get there. And there we go, there is all of the practice data for the Spanish Grand Prix all done and dusted. Join me slightly later today for when the qualifying edition drops. If you've got any questions, please let me know in the comments below and I will respond as best I can to those questions. But that's all I've got for you today, guys. I hope you have enjoyed and I'll catch you in the next one with whatever and whenever I decide to make it. I'll see you guys then.